Allah says, don't even go near fornication, adultery, as zina. Don't, go, don't even go near it. He doesn't say, la tazinu, don't do adultery, don't commit adultery. He says, don't go near it. In other words, there's the act itself. And then there is a series of smaller acts that lead to it. It's got a perimeter around it, and you can't even go close to it. One has to understand the language of the Qur'an and the sensitivity in which it deals with the subject to appreciate the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal and, and how He's counseling us in dealing with this problem. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us there are certain things that in and of themselves are not haram. You're not going to be able to pinpoint it and say it is wrong. But when you get involved in it, you're going to get sucked into a gravitational field and it'll pull you in slowly and surely, little by little by little, and eventually it'll get you. Eventually it'll come at you. You know, one of the things we learn about shaitan that, that is remarkable to me is that he's extremely patient. He won't get you one shot. He'll come at you and he will put a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until he destroys your character. He won't come and make you do the wrong thing right away. You know, even in the story of Adam salam, and Hawa, inshallah one day we'll do that story and some of the wisdoms from that story in the Qur'an. The way he approached them in Surah Al-A'raf is really interesting. He was relentless. It wasn't just one time. Like we assume that he just came and said, hey, tree, doesn't it look good? And he was gone. No, 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 no. He was extremely relentless. And he kept at it and he kept at it and he kept at it and he built this idea in them until they would think it's their idea. You know? And he, when, when people start listening to shaitan, this is the same surah Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My slaves, you're not going to have any authority over them. In other words, people who really submit to Allah, He will not have authority over them. But others, Shaitanu ya'idukum al faqr wa ya'murukum bil fahsha, Surah Al Baqarah. He will command you to do shamelessness. In other words, when you listen to Him a little bit, you've granted Him a little bit of power. When you listen to Him a little more, you've granted Him a little more power. And if you keep on listening to Him, He gets to the point where He can command you. You will find yourself, I can't even help myself, Brother Norman. I can't even help myself. I don't even know. I don't know how to turn the computer off. I don't know what makes me do that every night. I don't know what makes me do this or that. I don't know what makes me go there. Go into that chat session. You know? Go and log into that you know, horrific website. Go watch that filth. Why, does he make, why, why do I end up doing that? Why can't I lower my eyes when I'm in an elevator? When I'm walking down the street? I can't even help myself. I don't know what to do. That's, the, when, that's when you know shaitan's got a pretty good hold on you. He's got a pretty solid hold on you. And you've, got, you've been sucked into a, a really, you know, how do you say, a, a vicious cycle. It's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And you're not addressing it and it's making the problem worse. And it's, it's destroying your spirituality altogether. Your relationship with Allah depends on a heart being clean. Every time you're exposed to filth, more dirt, more blackness, more you know, like covers are poured on top of your heart. And it keeps on pouring and it keeps on pouring and it keeps on pouring to the point where you're listening to the word of Allah and you can't get yourself to even shed a single tear. It won't come because your heart has been made so hard because of all the exposure to filth, all the sin that your eyes are taking in all the time. And you don't even care anymore. You know a good heart, when it sees something inappropriate that, that, that doesn't coincide with the commandments of Allah, it is disturbed. It's not attracted, it's disturbed. It says no, that's wrong. Immediately the conscience kicks in, the alarm goes off. But when, you have, when you're at the point, when you're by yourself and you feel no guilt doing it, you just don't feel anything. You don't feel that it's wrong. The only thing you, before you stare at a sister, you look around like, is anybody else watching? And then you take a good look. That means the fear of Allah is completely gone. The only fear you have is that of the seen. There is no more fear of the unseen. What a horrible spiritual state to be in. Allah says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُونَ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ He knows the stealing of the eyes, that little glance you caught. He knows that one, that little glance you took. What to speak of the stare. And He knows what the chests are hiding. You know why I brought up this particular ayah? Don't even go near zina. إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً It has always been considered a lewd, shameless, vulgar act. وَسَاءَ sabila And a horrible path. Allah describes it as a path. A horrible path. In other words, a path has steps. Right? A path is made up of steps. You have to identify which step you're in. What, is, what, is, what makes you get into this? You know, and for each of you, there's a process, there's a cycle. You're in a room by yourself. 
You know, you're at, after school, you've got a couple of hours before your, your, your uh, parents get home. You know, you're among a bunch of friends that don't have any standards. You have to identify what leads you to this sin every time. And you have to cut it in its tracks. You have to stop going down that path. What's amazing to me about this ayah, where it's, where it's situated. Right after this ayah, Allah says, don't murder people. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ don't kill any person that's that innocent person essentially. Allah mentioned this crime first and murder second. Is, can you think of that? Like we think of murder as this huge crime, right? But Allah says when you violate the dignity of a human being, that's fahsha. Looking at a human being in that way is violating your own and their dignity. And when we kill a person, we have violated their physical, you know, their, their right to life. So there's the spiritual murder, fahsha, and there's the physical murder, qatl. There's two kinds of murder here. So Allah mentions the spiritual murder first. We, our standards have gone so low. A movie comes out, you see a couple of trailers, you tell yourself, ah, there's just one bad scene in it, it's okay. It's PG-13, it's not R. What used to be R 10 years ago is now PG-13. What used to be PG-13 is now PG. They put filthy scenes in everything now. And, and we don't even care about the spiritual price we're paying. It's affecting our prayer, it's affecting our dua, it's affecting our character, it's affecting our family life. It is. And we, we don't care. We just think, hey, that's life, bro, come on, live in the times. It's all right. That's just what it is now. What can you do? So many of you don't care what kinds of pictures you put up of yourselves on your Facebook pages. You know, I stopped going on Facebook for a reason. I don't say that Facebook is haram or whatever, but for me personally, I couldn't do it anymore. I just couldn't do it. You know, I stay in, you know, I will, we'll put something up on our Bayina thing, like an announcement or this or that. But for socializing, just the things I saw were so disappointing. Like, how can you, how can you do that? You're Muslims. How can you post pictures like that? You know, have dignity for yourself. Have dignity for your family. Guard your gaze. You know, start with your eyes, the zina of the eyes, and everything else goes from there. Everything else goes from there. Inshallah ta'ala, I want to talk to you about this subject at length and do little small snippets and maybe portions from the Qur'an that deal with this subject. But the last thing I'll tell you today, inshallah ta'ala at least, is the, something about the word fahisha, which I'm translating as shamelessness or lewdness or vulgarity. The Arabic language has roots that are close to each other. Wahish and fahish. Wahish actually means wild animal. Fahish means someone who acts like a wild animal. Shamelessness is described as behavior close to animal behavior. Allah has dignified us as human beings. The punishment of Adam alayhi, on Adam salam was his clothes were removed. Our mothers and our fathers' clothes were removed. That was a punishment from Allah. And immediately they recognized that they need to cover themselves. They didn't learn to cover themselves from a society. It wasn't society that taught them to be shameless. You know, nowadays your anthropology professor tell you, you know, it's society that makes us dress, dress in clothes. You know, it's a sociological thing. We learn to dress and cover ourselves over history. But natural, you know, naturally we're just supposed to be the way we are, like all other animals. Adam salam didn't learn anything from any society. He was given a consciousness, and the moment his clothes were removed, he's trying to cover himself. Our mother's trying to cover herself. We are supposed to be a people that guard ourselves with covering, and we dignify others by not looking at them. Even if they don't have dignity for themselves, we should have dignity for them and not look. Because they are in the end a creation of Allah. Even if they're a disappointing creation of Allah. They are a creation of Allah. And we have more respect for ourselves and for humanity in general to not, to look at it, to not look at it as animals look at other animals. May Allah Azza wa make us spiritually healthy and alleviate us from this growing and ever-increasing spiritual problem. And that is our